Now on to the dinosaur of the day, Concavenator Corcovatus, which was requested by Cesar via Facebook, so thank you. Concavenator is a theropod that lived in the early Cretaceous, and the type species, again, is Concavenator corcovatus, and the name means humpbacked hunter from Cuenca. The fossils were found in 2003, but it wasn't named until 2010, and paleontologists Jose Luis Sanz, Francisco Ortega, and Fernando Escaso found the fossil. The holotype is of a nearly complete articulated skeleton, which is now at the Museo de las Ciencias de Castilla-La Mancha in Spain, and it's on display if you want to see it. It's the most complete carcharodontosaur, and it's the first to show evidence of feathers, or at least something like feathers. They place it as the most basal carcharodontosauridae. But back to the feathers, it had these small bumps on its forelimbs that are thought to be quill knobs. And in birds, quill knobs anchor the roots of the feathers on their wings. Other animals with quill knobs on its forelimbs include theropods, like Velociraptor. They're pretty sure it's feathers or something like feathers because scales do not have follicles, and concavenator's bumps have follicular structures, which means that it had quill knobs and therefore appendages that were feathers or maybe a prequel to feathers. Before concavenator, fossils from Coelurosaurus, which is the theropod group with feathers, showed that birds evolved from dinosaurs, but concavenator was a carcharodontosaurid, not a Coelurosaur, and its last shared common ancestor with Coelurosaurus was something that lived in the Middle Jurassic. The concavenator's quill knobs, therefore, were the first evidence of a theropod dinosaur outside of the Coelurosaur group covered in something other than scales. Back in 2010, this showed that feathers were more widespread among theropods than scientists had thought, and that feathers could appear on larger dinosaurs and not cover an entire body. That's kind of interesting to think how that was only five, six years ago, and we've already come such a long way. Yeah, definitely. Louis Chiap, director of the Dinosaur Institute at the Natural Museum of L.A. County, told Discovery News back in 2010 that concavenator, quote, shows that feathers were not restricted to just small dinosaurs, even if they didn't cover their entire bodies. This fossil offers additional support documenting the dinosaurian ancestry of birds and the claim that birds are living dinosaurs, end quote. So concavenator may have had some sparse protofeathers on its lower arms. No feathers were found with the fossils, so again, we're not entirely sure if it was feathers or something feather-like. And these feathers or feather structures may have helped with thermal control or helped with aerodynamics, not flying, but running or something. However, since the quill knobs are only on its forearms, they were probably just used for display. Not everyone, however, believes that these were actually quill knobs. Darren Nash said that these bumps were irregularly spaced and that many animals have something similar along their intermuscular lines, and that these were muscular insertion points. But then, Alana Cuesta, Ortega, and Sanz, who described Concavenator in 2010, studied the bumps again and presented their findings at the 2015 meeting of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, where they concluded that the bumps were definitely quill knobs, though it was unusual for them to be on the top surface of the bone. However, they said this can be seen in some modern birds, such as the moorhen. They also found impressions that show that it had wide rectangular scales under its tail and feet. And also notable were it two tall vertebrae in front of the hips that formed a tall, narrow, pointed crest, possibly a hump on its back. This short but tall hump, or maybe sail, was only on its lower back, so it looked kind of like a dorsal fin. And yeah, that's exactly what it looks like when I look at it. And it's easy to imagine it like swimming around with it sticking out of the water like... Dun -dun -dun -dun. Yeah, like Jaws. <laughs> I don't know if it swam. No, I know, but just based on the shape of the thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if it didn't swim, it would have looked funny. Yeah. That was the kind of, the two big things. They're like, well, it's already unusual. It has this hump or its sail, but even more unusual is also the feathers. So for what was a kind of a big deal when they found it. Yeah. So Francisco Ortega said that the hump may have looked similar to humps that we see on some modern cows. <laughs> <laughs> Poor concavenator. <laughs> Tall neural spines have been found in spinosaurids, carcharodontosaurids, and some tetaneurons before, but not only on the lower back. So concavenator's back hump or sail function is unclear because it's so limited. <laughs> it may have been used for display, thermal regulation, to store fat, or something else entirely. Beckel spinex has been compared to concavenator, and we've talked about Beckel spinex back in episode 54, and some scientists think that they could be the same genera. 
They're about the same size, they look alike, they both have this weird hump, but it's hard to know since Beckel Spinax, all we know about it is three dorsal vertebrae. Also, Beckel Spinax is 10 million years older than Concavenator. Concavenator is about 20 feet or 6 meters long, and it had short, stout claws, and it lived in wetlands. And Concavenator shows that Carcharodontosaurids, which is the group it's in, lived in Europe and the northern continents in addition to South America, Africa, and Australia. Carcharodontosaurids, we've talked a number of times, that type of dinosaur seems to keep popping up. And its name means shark tooth lizard, and they were carnivorous theropods that Ernst Stromer named in 1931. And the family includes Gigantosaurus, Mapusaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Tyrannotitan, who are all about the same size or larger than T. rex. And Carcharodontosaurids and Spinosaurids were the largest predators in Gondwana in the early and middle Cretaceous. 